Dr. Glass, you're a microbiologist at the University of Wisconsin. And I'd really like your input because a lot of people tend to think when there's a foodborne illness outbreak that it must have been caused by meat and poultry. But what do the data show? Actually, what the data shows from CDC, which is the latest things that came out, is that produce is the, on the top of the list for causing foodborne illness. And I think what happens, why people get that misinterpretation, is because we do have a lot of information that's going out for recalls that are related to meat and poultry. And a lot of the same type of pathogens that are found on meat and poultry, such as Listeria monocytogenes, E. coli 0157H7, and Salmonella, can be found on both types of commodities. Uh, the CDC has actually actually indicated that over 40% of the foodborne outbreaks are produce related and those include things such as sprouts, leafy greens which include spinach and lettuce, tomatoes, peppers, cantaloupes and other nut based products. Many critics say that even if it's produce that's involved in a foodborne illness outbreak it's likely that animal agriculture somehow contributed to it by contaminating the produce. What do your data show? The bacteria can come from a lot of different sources. It, yes, it could potentially come from agriculture, but good agricultural practices are going to make sure that there's going to be a separation of the animal agriculture so there's no one off in it, making sure that there are um, um, irrigation water is going to be clean, but then we still are going to run into the risk of having wild animals that might run into it because you can't control those. But what is probably more f or just as frequent is going to be how that produce is going to be handled during the harvesting and during the packing. As an example, with the listeriosis outbreak with the cantaloupe, it was found out that it was due to insanitary conditions within the packing uh, material, uh, in the packing houses, rather than it actually occurring within the field. So what are the leading causes of foodborne illnesses by bacteria or microorganism? By far, norovirus is the leading cause of foodborne illness in the United States. And it accounts for well over 50% of the outbreaks. And it's important to know that most of those outbreaks are associated with uh, sick food handlers rather than it coming directly from the food. And so when a handler is going to have some norovirus on their hands, they may transmit it to the food, and there's going to be a short time between when they're going to be presented to you and you will be consuming it. There is a smaller percentage that is actually due to uh, direct contamination of the food itself. But norovirus by far is going to be the most important um, foodborne illness. Some people feel really intimidated about cooking because of all the news that they hear about foodborne illness outbreaks. Should they be? Well, I tell them that no nothing in the world is risk-free, um, that they can ins make an insurance policy by handling their food products safe. But the meat industry has been doing a lot of work to improve the safety overall and has really made a lot of strides over the last decade or so. Um, a case in point is going to be the decreased uh, uh, number of cases of listeriosis that have been uh, associated with ready-to-eat meat products. Also decreased incidence of other types of bacteria on animal carcasses. So they've been doing a lot of work as far as improved cleaning and sanitation, um, understanding, validating their processes, and also by adding certain kinds of antimicrobial ingredients that will enhance the safety of it. Along with that is going to be temperature control and putting together the big picture, they really have made some major improvements in food safety. Now with that being said, they're always looking for the holy grail, always looking for more improvement. And that's probably one of the reasons why we stay doing the research that we do, trying to find novel types of uh, processes and antimicrobial ingredients that will be useful uh, to the food industry and ultimately be able to help in public health.